Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Um, God began, God has been telling us even from last year that 2020 is an unprecedented year. It's the year of the Lord. It's also a year of darkness. We said in December that it's a year of gross darkness. We even said there has been no evil that we have seen in the last decade or century that has been like the year 2020. And it's already playing out. But we also said in 2020, you know, when evil is working, God too is working. But most of the time, what people see is what Satan is doing. Until when God has finished his work, then they see the beauty and they see God's work made manifest. God is working while Satan is making all the noise through the COVID-19 and making so much terror, causing fear and pandemic everywhere. Of course, we know the coronavirus is for a season. Its time will expire and it will go. And what will be left is what God has been doing that those who are not distracted have been part of. The Lord spoke to me to say there is a wind of change. Not that it's coming. It has arrived upon the body of Christ. I once read a book by Charles and Francis Hunter. It's titled To Heal the Sick. What a beautiful, wonderful book. And in that book, they gave a prophecy. They said they saw the church like a giant tied down to the ground. And the year came and the Lord gave a shout and a clap from heaven. And all what was used to tie that giant snapped off. And that giant rose and a great and mighty anointing came upon it. And it filled the earth and the earth was filled with the glory of the Lord like never before. This is that year when the church will rise. There's a wind of change. There's a mighty wind like a hurricane that is sitting upon the church. Unfortunately, so many people are distracted with the coronavirus. But like I said, Satan may be working, God too is working. And this wind of change is going to come upon the church and bring it to a new level of glory, a new level of responsibility, a new level of accountability, and a new level of discipline. The church will acquire a wisdom that all the elites of the earth will not be able to gainsay or resist. The church will walk in such a wisdom. It looks right now that the church, that the world is the one that has a wisdom and the church is lagging behind. When this anointing infuses into the church and those who are prepared for it receive it, they will walk in such a glorious anointing and wisdom that the leadership of the world will have to consult the church. And the church will move out of this stigmatized state into a state of honor and great respect. It will move out of a state of contempt to a state of glory. There's a wind of change. Now, let me also say something. The, nobody can lock the church down. No human being, no spirit, no being, spiritual or temporal, can lock the church. It's not possible. You can't separate the church from Jesus. Jesus is the head of the body. And we are the body. So nobody can lock it out. People can lock the four walls of a building. But the church is not locked out. The church is still functioning. You must understand, like the speaker that said came earlier said, he said, you must find out what God wants you to do. At one time in the ministry of Jesus, they shut down his most popular ministry, which is the healing and the miraculous ministry. It was so bad that people had to come and meet him. Can't you show us another miracle? And he said to them, no more miracle will be given. No more sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth and shall rise up again. He said to them, the only miracle I'm going to show you now is a miracle of my resurrection. And the only thing that was left was teaching. And the crowd were not enjoying the teaching. They wanted the miracle. They abandoned him. They couldn't handle the teaching. The 70 clothes abandoned him. And he told the twelve, are you two not ready to go? They said, no, we shall stay with you. And they stayed. So at one time, the miracle 
and the healing ministry of Jesus was shut down and he could actualize purpose by going to the cross. Apostle Paul evangelized the entire world, especially Europe and Asia. He was traveling from nation to nation preaching, winning souls. At one time, God shut it down. God could have told him, Jesus appeared to me, he said, you're going to Rome where you're going to bear me witness. In Rome, he was not going about bearing witness. He was in prison in the house. So Jesus simply told him, you are going to Rome, but not roving about. So at one time in Apostle Paul's ministry, they shut down his outreach, his evangelical ministry, the most popular, and left his teaching ministry and his prophetic ministry. And there he began to get inspiration and was writing the letters, which is the two-thirds of the New Testament we have today. Every minister will face it at one time of his, or the other in his life. Unfortunately, we all face it at the same time. Some have had ministries shut down before and reopened. So what is going on is not strange. And so ministries are not being shut down. An aspect that is being shut down for another aspect to actualize purpose. So we must understand that when this time passes, what God wants to accomplish, if it's not accomplished in some minister's life, they might be in serious trouble. So the clamor is not just to the reopening of churches, which will reopen, but the clamor is for the actualization of the intended purpose of God for such a time as this. Now God is saying the wind of change has come into the church, and for anyone to partake of this wind of change, which is for glory, which is for uplifting, which is for honor, they must take a step of faith. I, I guess I've been on this message for about a month now and it's yet to change. It's not changed. And I don't think it will change until God has accomplished what he wants to accomplish. God wants every believer to take a step of faith. The wind is not in the church in Nigeria. It's upon the church all over the world. In this order, a lot of things have been rearranged, including leadership, including focus, including assignments. People are being restructured. Like you hear the restructuring, they will call for restructuring. The church is being restructured and God is reassigning. Some who have gained five more talents are being given more talents. Some who hid their talents, it is being taken away from them and given to another. A lot is happening. Jacobs are retiring. And the Josephs are sitting on the throne. We're in the age of the sons of God. We're in the age of faith. You either walk by faith or they're going to cast the person out of the way. My prayer is our churches, when they were open, have prepared us for such a time as this. The allies are being retired and the Samuels are being lifted up. This is not the year. Of, I know with the shutdown, people have been hungry. They're facing a lot of challenges, their needs. But this is not the year of hunger. Neither is it the year of food. It's not the year of drink. It's not the year of cloth. It is the year of the kingdom. But there is hunger. There is need for food. God told Solomon, I'm glad you didn't ask for the obvious. I know that you need these things, but this is not the time to be talking about these things. For those who will advance in this new level of glory, they will be hungry, but they will not be discussing hunger. They will need clothes, but they will not be discussing clothes. I remember one time in my life, God spoke to me and taught me Matthew 6. He said in Matthew 6, he said, you take no thought for your life what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or what you shall put on. It's not just talking about food. It's talking about basics and necessities in your life that helps you to get by. He said, but you must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I remember once I was broke. I didn't have money. I didn't have food. And it took me about six days. I did eat nothing. I did not eat anything for about six days. And about the seventh day, I remember then my neighbor was owing me some money. And I said, but Lord, you said, I should take no thought what I will eat. I'm going to prove the scripture. I'm not going to look for what to eat. 
I, I, I had I could go to my parents' house to eat. I didn't go. I said, no. I didn't, he didn't say, look to your parents to feed you. He said, look to God. These are basics. If God can take care of the basics, and I'm seeing glory ahead of me, how am I going to attend to that glory? If all that my concern is what to eat and drink, I can see the glory of God. I see the dead being raised up. I see not only the dead being raised up, I see those who have been buried, decomposing bodies. God will show me them. They were exhumed, and he will tell me in a vision, say, raise them up. I said, they have decomposed. Say, get more and add to those bodies, and raise them back to life. And I said, it's food and drink, I said, let me rather die and go to heaven than all I'll be talking about God. I'll rather wrestle those glories to come to pass than food. I didn't eat. I didn't ask anybody for food. I could have asked my neighbor who was owing me about some money, about 5,000 naira to give me money so I could buy. I didn't ask him. Sometimes we'll meet on the stairway. We say, Pastor, how are you? I say, I'm fine. I say, you're looking fresh. I say, this one doesn't know what I'm going through. I say, how can I be looking fresh to be so hungry? He said, you've lost some weight, yeah? like you're exercising. I say, yes. I said, that's good. He didn't know I was hungry. The seventh day, it was really bad. I couldn't really walk. I was dizzy. And I was trying to write a note that paraventure I don't make it. I was trying to write a note apologizing to my parents that I'm sorry if I died, they shouldn't weep. I've died proven the scriptures. I was ready to die than beg to eat. To me, it offered more glory before God. And I drifted up to sleep. And I woke up with a thunderous voice from heaven. And that voice said, glory be to God in the highest. My, best, my bed shook the earth. I thought there was an earthquake like a tremor. I wanted to run out and I noticed that it was a voice coming from heaven, shaking everywhere. It said, peace and goodwill be unto you. And God saw that this is a material that we can use, not concerned with food, drink, that even in the quake of adverse need, he was concerned about the kingdom. That morning, my neighbor knocked at my door. About two hours later, he said, Pastor, I'm owing you money and you didn't even remind me we were passing on the street. I'm so sorry. I don't like owing people. He gave me my money. He's from Anambra State. He said, we're holding a meeting of Anambra people in my house. We have cooked, I, I guess it's uh, Onubu or so. He said, we have cooked Onubu vegetable. You will like it. The wife brought pounded yam with onubu vegetable with meat. They brought cold malt. They brought boiled corn. And they set it on the table and they left. One hour later, my mom shows up. Say, we've not seen you in a while. I just said I should cook stew. I'll come and give you with meat. They put it on the table. Remember, I'd not eaten for seven days. When that voice came, all the hunger vanished. Strength came. I was still not hungry. Later that day, my sister came. He said, something said I should come and take you for shopping. He said, look, I'm not holding cash. I'm holding a card. You have no limit. Pick anything you want. I picked a carton was food. He said it's too small. Pick more. If I pick granules, no. He said pick cashew. Pick the one with pepper and the one without pepper. Just have variety. If I pick uh, tea, say pick lemon tea. Pick strawberry. Pick green tea. Pick beverage. Pick seven variations. You are not picking enough. And God said, I'm the one feeding you, because your life is not occupied with food, drink and clothing. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. The wind of change that has come is not for those who are occupied with food, drink, and clothing, meaning basic necessities. It's for those who are concerned about the glory that is set above. And God is asking the church to take a decision, a wind of change. I'll give an example of a man called Job in the Bible. In Job 14, from verse 7, Job said, if a man dies, shall he live again? He said, if you cut down a tree in its glory, and you remove the branches, you remove the fruits, but you leave the root, he said, at the scent of water, it will grow again. He said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. So he wanted to wait. 
But in Job 42, God made it clear to him, Job is not by waiting. The wind of change has arrived. There's a decision you need to take. Job 42, verse 10. The Bible says, God turned the captivity of Job around when he prayed for his miserable friends who ran him down, who abused him, who said ill against him, who said what has happened to him came because, look, there are people running people down on Facebook, running pastors down, running bishops down. What they say may be true, but God said, this anointing must meet you in peace. Meaning, you are going to pray for all those men of God you are running down. Otherwise, this wind of change will bypass them and go on. It's not for the murmurers. It's not for the complainers. It's for those who are walking by faith. And you can partake of the faith movement by taking a decision of peace. Job took a decision of peace. You don't pray for men who in the time of your grief come and abuse you. They run you down. In the hour of Jesus said, you have stood by me to his disciples. In my hour of temptation, the time of my lowest, when I had nobody to turn to, you stood by me, you were with me. For this cause, I will give you a kingdom as my father has given me a kingdom. The best time to know your friends are at your lowest. And they are the ones that you reward in the future. But for Job, when his friends came, they did not comfort him. Job said, I looked, there was no one to comfort a man lost 10 children, lost his properties. His friends should come and encourage him and comfort They didn't encourage him. They kept pointing to him, you have committed a crime. Look at you. Are you not the one that comforted the poor and strengthened the weak? So this small one has happened to you. See how you are looking. No word of comfort. No word of encouragement. It was right for Job to run them down. It was right of Job to abuse them. It was right of Job to turn his back on them. But this wind of change will only come on those who have found of peace. What did Job do? He prayed for them. Did he pray for them should die? No, he didn't pray they should fall down and die. He prayed for their peace. He prayed for their prosperity. He prayed for their progress. In Job 42 verse 10, the Bible says, God turned. So all the while he was waiting, he was not supposed to wait. He was supposed to do something. Some are waiting. God said, don't wait. Do something. Take a step of faith. Take a decision. Did God turn the captivity of Job around? when he prayed for his friends. Some of you need to forgive people who have wronged you. Forgive a lot of people. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, that may you be found of peace without spot, without wrinkle, when he will show up. And the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. So if you don't know what decision to take, take a decision of peace. Pray for those who have wronged you. Pray for the man of God. I remember a story of a man of God who said he was watching another man of God raising money on TV. And he made a statement. And he said, oh, these people have come again. Must they raise money on TV? And he said, miracles ceased in his ministry. And he sought God's face. And God said, what you said about that man of God, that his judgment is not in your hand. I didn't give you the stick to punish him. And so for that miracle has ceased in your ministry. He said he had to take $150,000 to go and sow into that man of God's life. He said the miracle ministry opened up again in his ministry. That man of God didn't know he said that. When he came to me, he said, oh, you said that? I didn't know. He said, well, I know I said it. And he had to give an offering of peace. Take a decision of peace, especially Nigerians. Many have wrung their mouth. And utter statements that are standing before the throne of God waiting for you on the day of judgment. And it may bring you into condemnation. Take a step in the way of peace. You have to forgive if people have wronged you. I'm just giving you clues of what you can do. Everyone must take a step of faith. Some will take a step of faith in the light of what God has revealed to them. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. While we behold the face of the Lord as in a mirror, we are changed. God wants to bring a change. The body is to metamorphose. A change is going to take place. Oh, goodness me. We will not talk much for people to get saved. The glory that will be displayed, people will fall and ask that can they, can they get saved? They will come. The days of this day now are over. And you know this kind of change is going to sweep some people off. It will bring judgment on some. 
It will bring promotion to some. My prayer is that it will bring promotion to you. It will bring elevation to you. It will bring upliftment to you. It will bring honor unto you. It will bring God's mercy into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And he says in 2 Corinthians 18, as we behold the face of the Lord as in the mirror, we are changed into that same image of the Lord from what? From one level of glory to another. Everybody needs a change. If you're in a state where things are so bad, you need to get it out from the bad to good. If yours is good, it needs to move from good to better. If yours is better, it needs to move from better to best. If yours is best right now, it needs to move from best to glory. If yours is glorious, then it needs to move from glory to glory. It's endless. It's endless. It's infinite. It has no end from one level of glory to another. Some people will make, take a decision in Psalm 126. It talks about a major paradigm shift in the life of a person, a group of people, a community. He said, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, it's as if we were in a dream. Some of you are about to come out and appear as if you are in a dream. What is about to happen is going to look like a dream. He said, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The change was so glorious and evident that it was said among the heathens, the unbelievers, and those who didn't believe in Jesus. Wow! God has done something great in these people's lives. Turn again, O oh God, our captivity. Then they said what they did. We sowed in tears. Now we're reaping with joy, meaning their step of faith was that they sowed. And the change that came was that they reaped. They said they went bearing seeds, weeping. Those are not tithes and offerings. If there's a contention in a person's life on tithes and offerings, he is not qualified for this change. Those are givings by weepings and givings that makes a man cry. He says, shall doubtless, without fail, return rejoicing. That wind of change, the act of faith, there was a seed. I, I, I'll give you a, a testimony. There was this lady, she was a pastor's wife, and I guess for time, I'll have to close with this testimony. Some of you have to make a change, a step of faith. To wake up out of sleep in Romans 13 it says it's time to awake out of sleep for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. That sleep could mean so many things in different people's lives. It's a state of dormancy, a state of comfort, unreal comfort, a state of a false security. That sleep is not physical sleep. It's a state where you put your security and your trust outside of God. And God says, drop that security and let me prove that I am your security. He says, except the Lord watches, the watchman watch in vain. And except the Lord blesses, it's not done. So God, that state of sleep is a state where a man puts his trust in something outside of God. And God says, wake out of sleep in Romans 13, for your breakthrough is closer. He says in Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for your light is come, but there is darkness gross darkness everywhere but upon thee so in the midst of this darkness there's a glory that has descended and an anointing that has come a wind of change that has rested on the church of our lord jesus christ all over the world that will make the glory of god be seen in your life we're not denying the fact that there's a COVID 19 listen it's a pestilence it's an affliction it has a time lapse it has a beginning and an end and it will expire and I pray it will expire soon. But when it expires and the darkness is removed, that's not when the light will come. The light is coming while the darkness is on. When the COVID goes, the glory is gone. The glory is when the COVID is on. In Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of God is seen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But 
in the midst of that darkness, upon thee the glory of God shall be seen. In Luke 21, he says, you shall see pestilence, you shall see earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars. He says, men's hearts will fail for seeing this darkness. Men's heart will fail for acknowledging and receiving the darkness, which is not only COVID-19, it's just part of the darkness. He said, but you lift up your head, for your redemption has come. And the midst of the darkness is also telling us that there is light. And the darkness is also telling us we're being distracted from the light. So the light has arrived. That's why there's so much darkness. The darkness is trying to cover us from seeing the light, but we know Satan's tricks. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.